All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Ray Thompson. I'm the Senior Director here at Avid for Partner and in Industry Marketing, and I want to welcome you all to today's presentation. Uh, I also want to thank uh, our partner, High Vision, who's going to be uh, not only partnering with us, but presenting uh, today as well. We're really excited to talk to you today about what's new in Media Composer in the next release. Uh, which will impact the over-the-shoulder options that you now have available directly out of Media Composer. So welcome, and thank you all for being here today. Um, at the end of this webinar, you'll have an understanding of what's new in Media Composer, um, including the SRT component, a little uh, a bit of a spoiler there, uh, the over-the-shoulder workflow that's now possible um, with the SRT component added into Media Composer Enterprise, um, how the High Vision Gateway uh, provides a many-to-many -many distribution capability that we'll cover in the webinar and actually demo today. And then the many options for viewing the output of Media Composer, including mobile. Uh, and as I said, we'll do a demo not only of the over-the-shoulder options as well as the gateway, uh, but we'll also show you uh, the other features that are now uh, available in the next release of Media Composer. And then, of course, we'll talk about how you can take advantage of, of the solution. And then at the end, we'll ask any, uh, or answer some questions. If you have uh, questions throughout the course of the webinar, we encourage you to go ahead and ask those in the Q&A section. So uh, feel free to type in any questions you have uh, for those of you in the Zoom room. Um, and we have folks on the line who will answer those uh, as they come in. And then at the end, we'll pick some and answer uh, some of those questions live. If you're uh, watching this event on a social platform, Thank you. Um, we also have folks monitoring those channels as well. Uh, so any questions we get from there, we'll also try and, uh, and get to. Um, and so with that, we'll, we'll uh, go ahead and roll right along because we have a lot to cover. So the agenda for today's webinar includes introductions, which I'll do in a moment. Uh, I'll quickly talk about some of the market dynamics that have contributed to not only the new features in uh, the next release of Media Composer, but also the reasoning around uh, implementing SRT. Um, we'll talk about what that means in terms of over-the-shoulder workflows, and we'll also cover the gateway and what that basically provides uh, in terms of doing that many-to-many -many distribution. We'll do the demo, and then, like I said, we'll cover um, what's uh, new in .NET, right? And then, of course, we'll cover questions. We have a distinguished panel uh, presenting to all of you today. Um, I just introduced myself, but I also want to welcome Marcus Scheoler from High Vision. Marcus, you want to just jump on real quick and, and introduce yourself to the group? Yeah, Ray, thank you very much. It's great to be here. Uh, my name is Marcus Scheoler. I am the VP of Product Marketing at High Vision, and i um, happy to be on another Avid webinar talking to everybody about exciting things related to SRT. So thank you for awesome. having us. Thanks, Marcus. And then we also have Thomas Van Stockham. Thomas, you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Sure. Thanks, Ray. Uh, so I'm Tom Van Stockham. I'm a sales engineer on the broadcast side at High Vision. I'm also one of the lead uh, technical uh, solutions engineers in the Avid partnership and very excited about this functionality we're going to be talking about, as I know everyone else is on this call. Awesome. Thanks, Thomas. And then last but certainly not least, uh, Michael Krulik. Hello. Hello. Hi, everyone. How are you doing? Greetings. Michael Krulik with Avid Product Marketing and the Video Product Evangelist. Well, Excellent. Thanks, Michael. All right, let's get into it. So uh, certainly, as we all know, right, lockdowns uh, happened and it really forced the industry to pivot, which it did an amazing job of, right, uh, enabling a distributed workforce. Um, media companies were able to quickly respond and enable uh, basically business continuity to happen by implementing, uh, you know, the technologies needed in order to enable folks to work from home, basically. Um, and that, quite honestly, is nothing short of amazing when you think about it. And by and large, that was enabled by a lot of the technologies that were existing already, right? Uh, certainly virtualization of environments and certainly PCOIP and other remote access technologies, uh, both from Avid and from our partners, enabled folks to, to really make that happen and make it happen fast. What's happened now since, right, is people are starting to look forward and move on. Um, there's really been a couple different things that we've noticed from talking to our customers. Certainly one of the big things is, uh, while well, certainly some folks have been returning to the office and you'll see uh, a variety of different responses in terms of uh, how companies are handling 
uh, employees returning. Some folks are going back full time. Some folks are, are sort of doing a hybrid model and some folks are just working from home permanently. And that's because the experience overall was really positive, right? I think people were surprised across the industry, not not any particular vertical within the vertical, uh, but really across the board, folks were pleasantly surprised by the effectiveness of uh, remote access and uh, business continuity enabled by working from home. So what a lot of companies are certainly doing is investing in capabilities that will further enable that workforce to work from home. So, uh, you know, you went from, you know, everybody being in uh, the building uh, to certainly now everybody working from home. Some of this, of course, was already happening in the sense that we had digital disruption, if you think back before the pandemic, um, which was having both economic and operational impacts throughout the workflow, uh, again, regardless of whether it was news, sports, live production, or uh, certainly post. Um, and so you had this massive change that was already happening. Um, but when the pandemic hit, uh, like I said, it really sort of forced uh, folks to react, react quickly, leverage the infrastructure and the investments they've already made in many cases, in order to enable a distributed workforce. And the same thing was true when it came to uh, post environments, right? You had uh, sort of this uh, emerging workflow. You had a lot of folks now starting to uh, examine how to deliver content over the top, whether that be to partners uh, who basically are like OTT providers, all the usual suspects, or even uh, in some cases delivering directly to the consumer. Uh, and some of the impacts of that change and that shift have been massive, right? We've seen a significant change in the way in which people produce the content. And the pandemic only accelerated that across the board. So uh, what were some of the things that still exist in terms of some of the challenges? Certainly, probably the biggest request I know that we've gotten in working with uh, our, a lot, all of our customers really is in the work from home model um, and or the work from anywhere model, uh, A, enabling the uh, third monitor experience to be replicated at home was probably the biggest request we got uh, pretty early on, quite honestly. Uh, folks have asked for that re uh, request uh, quite a bit. I, I'd say we've pretty much universally heard that request from everybody. Um, the other key thing though was enabling people to look at the output of Media Composer from anywhere. So being able to enable uh, anyone, anywhere, anytime on any device to be able to look at that output and understanding that within the uh, different workflows that people were implementing, that there were really kind of different tiers of need, right? You had editors at home and or maybe even uh, assistant editors who would prefer to have, say, uh, a third monitor experience where they can output the highest quality possible. Again, getting as close as they can to that uh, deployed environment sitting uh, on-prem. You also had other folks though who were fine with just getting uh, a stream and having it sent to a mobile device. And certainly that uh, is a big request as well. So being able to be on the go and yet uh, never unplugged uh, and being able to look at uh, a sequence uh, as it's being created to be able to not only enable greater collaboration, but also certainly uh, drive higher efficiencies throughout the process. And then of course, is the client, right? The client wants to see what's going on as well. And oftentimes in the past, a client would come to the facility, which is where the term comes from, of course, over the shoulder, and they'd, they'd be standing over the shoulder of the editor. And maybe the client is one person, maybe it's multiple people and they're looking at the output and you know making suggested changes and critiquing what they're seeing so that the modifications can be made. So what uh, we're offering now in Media Composer Enterprise um, that'll be coming in the next release is the addition of SRT uh, available now as part of the open IO within Media Composer. What this allows you to do is send the output of Media Composer using SRT, either point to point or to multiple folks uh, at the same time. So you can now replicate that third monitor experience and mimic what you have on-prem. Well, at the same time, you can deliver using SRT to multiple different folks uh, all at the same time on a variety of different devices. And that's one of the great benefits of having adopted SRT, which as we know is an open source protocol and we're gonna get into it a little bit more. If you're not familiar with SRT, we'll give you a quick run through of exactly what it is and how it works. Um, but uh, suffice it to say, there's just uh, over 500 companies now that have adopted SRT into their uh, different media players, encoders, decoders, cameras, and so forth. So it's becoming fairly ubiquitous, if not completely ubiquitous, in that uh, it's been adopted by so many companies. And it's not just, you know, Hardware manufacturers, it's also uh, even, you know, companies like uh, Encompass and, you know, uh, Limelight, several others, right, that enable you to also send uh, SRT across their networks as well. Um, and then what this is giving you access to is, again, instant access to the output of Media Composer, the ability to do much more collaboration 
across the board, and it's giving you options in terms of how you deploy it. Um, it could be uh, more hardware than software. It could be all software if you uh, wanted to go that path. Uh, so there's both economic and operational benefits. And then last but not least, in terms of the gateway, as you'll see, um, you can certainly do either an on-prem or cloud uh, deployment. So what does it mean? It means that outside of Media Composer, right within the application, you can actually send SRT over commodity internet to either or any of these devices. So you can send it to a set-top box that has SRT capabilities baked in. In this case, it's the, the actual high vision set-top box the, uh, or a high vision Nikito or any SRT enabled decoder. You can send it to the high vision free Play Pro app, which is available for free in both the Apple and uh, Google Play stores. And then VLC player, just to name a few. There are other options too, um, but those are some of the key main ones, which is enabling you to watch this content again, across a variety of different devices at a variety of different quality levels, meeting different needs for different folks throughout the content delivery process. What we find though, and this will probably be the more common case, is that you have a facility that has multiple media composers and you need to send those multiple media composers to multiple different people all at the same time. And that's where the high vision gateway comes in. The gateway is acting as sort of the uh, sort of aggregation point. It's doing the stream replication and it's also doing the firewall traversal. So you can put the gateway into a specific mode and basically that eliminates the need to open things like UDP ports while at the same time keeping it secure. And we'll cover the security aspects uh, of this whole thing as well. Um, on the playback side, there's definitely options in the player, for example, to be able to look at different media composers, almost like a playlist, so that if you had 20, 40, 90 media composers, for example, um, you could actually label them media composer one, two, three, four, and five. And if I want to watch the output of media composer number five, I click that option, and now I'm seeing the output of media composer number five. And so this is all uh, managed easily through settings, which we'll demo for you today. Um, inside of Media Composer so you can manage things like um, the security level, you can pick the quality level, um, among other things. And so Michael's gonna walk you through uh, those components as well. So this is a pretty exciting development and this meets a, a really big demand for, for many folks. Um, so some of the key benefits uh, are, of course, the output delivered to any device uh, at any time. We're catering to the different uh, uh, needs of different folks within the production pipeline uh, by offering a sort of a low, medium, high quality level delivery and enabling folks to mimic the third monitor uh, sort of configuration they may have on-prem. But at the same time, we're uh, delivering to mobile devices so that folks on the go can actually see the output and do collaboration uh, and be much more efficient. Um, this helps save not only uh, in terms of travel time, uh, but it also helps you deliver the, the, the content faster. Anyone can review the content across a range of mobile devices, laptops, um, and other devices as well. You can even watch it on uh, uh, certain devices like, uh, say, an Apple TV. Um, and then there's, uh, like I said, software-only approaches to the implementation, uh, where, of course, you, you don't need any encoders on the Media Composer side because SRT is now right inside of the timeline. And then on the receive side, you could opt for uh, certainly an all software option uh, where people are looking at it just on the free Play Pro app or the VLC player. Um, but like I said, you know, most of what we found is that you will, you're going to have a mix. Uh, folks are gonna, who are going to need a decoder or a set-top box, depending on their role that they're playing within that actual production. The good news is you have flexibility, right? Both operationally and economically, uh, it provides a tremendous amount of flexibility. And then the gateway itself, just to reiterate, you can uh, definitely do deployment and that can either live as a actual device uh, on-prem or you can deploy it uh, into Microsoft Azure uh, and then you can manage it uh, basically uh, in the cloud. So you may be wondering, what is SRT, right? Some of you may not be 100% familiar with what SRT is. So for that explanation, I want to invite Marcus back on uh, to walk you through uh, a, a sort of overview of SRT and the SRT Alliance. So Marcus, uh, take it away. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Ray. So uh, to begin with, SRT is, um, a, it stands for Secure Reliable Transport. Um, and it's all about making it possible to send live IP video over uh, any network, um, but very importantly, for use cases like what we're describing today, uh, the public internet. And uh, one of the challenges when dealing with the public internet is network congestion. Um, and uh, SRT was developed and designed by High Vision uh, many years ago now, uh, 20, 2012 or so, uh, to 
overcome that problem, where effectively what it was that we were looking to do was provide a mechanism through which people could uh, send live high quality video over a network, even if that network was noisy uh, and congestion. What, what happens with live video, um, especially if you are concerned with latency, uh, in other words, you're trying to get the live video from one point to another with the lowest latency possible. And by, by low latency, we're talking about near real time. Um, generally, when it comes to SRT, people are talking about latencies in the milliseconds range as opposed to the seconds or even minutes. Um, so you, it enables that kind of that kind of latency enables conversations to happen between people that are uh, need to be interactive, which is you know in the in the, the conversation about open uh, over the shoulder workflows, uh, being able to see what's happening on the editor's uh, broadcast monitor. Uh, with minimal delay makes it possible to have a conversation about what you're seeing without worrying about whether or not what you saw happened 30 seconds ago or not. So the latency is critical, but when you push video packets over a noisy network, one of the challenges is something called packet loss. Um, and you can see in this video, uh, Zoom does not do it justice, by the way. It's, it plays back smoothly normally, uh, but you hopefully get the idea that on the left, there's a live source. And in the middle, you're seeing that live source being transported um, using a UDP-based protocol, a very low latency protocol. But the result is in a noisy network that you lose some packets. And we're dealing with a 2% amount of packet loss here. And uh, as you can probably see, that the image doesn't look very good. And sometimes it looks really bad. And if you were imagining that situation in an over-the-shoulder workflow where the director was remote and was trying to watch what you're doing uh, and sees that quality of video, it's going to undermine their confidence for sure. And they're, they're, you, they, you might be able to convince them that this is okay, it's normal, uh, it's just packet loss, but you know that in their mind they're thinking that the video that you're looking at is actually not good and that there's actually a problem with the source, which is what you don't want to have in an over-the-shoulder workflow. Um, and so SRT provides a layer of protection to ensure that those packets uh, are able to arrive uh, and are displayed in order. And even in situations where your network gets very, very, very noisy, there are configuration parameters that allow you to adjust the latency, uh, still keeping it very low, but uh, in such a way that you can overcome those challenges. And even if the video um, even if the network is very noisy, like what we were seeing a lot, uh, certainly at the, uh, during the pandemic where a lot of people were working at home, home networks weren't all, our home internet connections weren't always as great as people would have liked them to be. They might have been sharing their connection with three other family members. And, and the result was the, that often uh, network performance was unpredictable to say the least. And yet we have all sorts of stories from people who have been using SRT that even in the worst conditions, they were able to get high quality video um, from one point to another. And that's of course what is very important in these over the shoulder workflows. You need to see the high quality video to have the confidence that what you're seeing is real, is what, it's, is what the editor is working on. And um, that, so that you can have a, a conversation about it in an in interactive way. So should we jump over and talk a little bit about SRT Alliance because I think uh, this is a really, uh, it's really been a, an exciting initiative. Um, High Vision began the SRT Alliance um, in 2017. So that we had, we had um, de initially developed the protocol and then uh, took it to uh, the SRT Alliance and, uh, and made it open source. Um, and then that open source uh, technology was available to people on GitHub and companies like Avid joined with us very early in the process uh, to start looking at the, op the opportunities and the possibilities of having a technology like SRT open source that could be implemented in, in their products. And uh, so 2017, a few years ago now, we're uh, just getting to the point of back in the spring where 500 uh, companies had, had joined the SRT Alliance. It has effectively become uh, a de facto standard where all sorts of uh, major companies in, uh, in technology and broadcast and in media uh, have taken the technology in integrated in their products and enabled SRT workflows for their customers. And of course, we're very excited uh, to be working with Avid. Um, this is not the first thing we've done together. Avid uh, introduced SRT initially in Media Central Stream, uh, which happened back in February. And we're really excited to be part of this conversation right now where it's an SRT workflow directly out of Media Composer. So that's 
very exciting. The SRT Alliance is constantly growing. Uh, and in fact, just today, um, we announced that Google Cloud uh, was joining. Um, the SRT Alliance earlier this year, AWS joined. There's constantly new names uh, coming up because it is such a, an important bit of technology that is enabling some really exciting workflows. So um, I'd like to just really thank Ray for having us and allowing uh, High Vision and SRT uh, to be part of solving this really important problem for the for the the, the editors of the. Excellent. Thanks, Marcus. Yes. And, you know, notice that all these companies that are here aren't all just encoders, and camera manufacturers, but as I mentioned earlier, you know, you have networks now also adopting an IP option and they're leveraging SRT for distribution across their own networks. This provides you with just a tremendous amount of flexibility from a production standpoint. So uh, that's why SRT was such an easy choice for us in terms of our implementation. All right. So, uh, Security. Um, I think we you wanted to hit on that one too, Marcus, real quick, just in terms of yeah. security of the protocol and uh, some of the stuff that's built into it. For sure. I mean, security is uh, you know obviously, especially in these kinds of workflows where uh, people are working on content that has not been made available yet, and uh, and oftentimes it's very high value content. It does not want to get out to the public before and and. It's important that it, the, the mechanisms that you use do provide security to prevent that from happening. Um, as I mentioned, SRT stands for Secure Reliable Transport, and that's a very important aspect uh, of the technology. Um, it was designed to ensure that it could be used in broadcast and media workflows to protect unwanted viewers from accessing the content. Uh, encryption is a, an inherent part of how SRT works uh, and it's in, in integrated into the various SRT workflows at application levels from encoders to what we're, what, what we're going, to, going to see. Uh, Media Composer has the capability, the, the mobile apps to make sure that the people that are intended to see it are uh, the ones that can see it and nobody else. Um, it also has um, a, a, some capabilities that simplify the process of uh, traversing firewalls. And obviously firewalls are an important part of um, enterprise security um, processes. Um, and having flexibility uh, to be able to get in and out of firewalls in order to enable your workflows is something that is very important. Um, it's not often practical to go bother the IT team at the last minute when you need a port opened up to get some content um, in or out of your, your enterprise network. And SRT was designed with that in mind. And you, there are different modes, um, caller mode, listener mode, that enable these types of workflows where effectively, instead of trying to go into the firewall, you're essentially opening it up in such a way that you're going out of the firewall, even if SRT is going to be going into your enterprise network. And um, Tom will go into how to set that up in a minute, but it's, uh, it's a very important uh, capability. Uh, not you know we talk about SRT, we talk about the security, we talk about packet loss recovery, we talk about firewall traversal as being important aspects. And although this is not specific to uh, uh, SRT, uh, it's pretty uh, it's pretty cool that there are some simple tools that allow you to use QR codes to make it very easy to share um, the content that you need to send, so that the people that you're dealing with don't have to worry about configuring IP addresses and port numbers, and can simply hold up their phone, scan a QR code, and off they go. And the, and the security is baked into that as well. I mean, provided, of course, that people that you don't want to see this the QR code don't see it. But these are the you know these tools are there to enable um, the easiest workflows possible um, with the uh, with the maximum security concerns kept in mind. That's great, Marcus. Yeah, and the uh, the QR code is also ideal when you need to share, say, one-time access to a client who wants to look at it on a mobile device, um, who you only want to provide short-term access to, right? So the QR code is certainly a great option there as well. And all the security that's baked in lends itself very well to a zero trust and security by design infrastructure, uh, regardless of whether that's on-prem or in the cloud. So thanks, Marcus. That's great. So just uh, to kind of uh, reset where we are, right, the most common use case is going to more than likely be where you introduce the high vision gateway. Um, and so with that, I'm going to bring on Tom Van Stockham, who's going to walk you through uh, sort of some, some more of what's on the slide, but then more importantly, talk you through how to configure the gateway in order to enable this workflow uh, and to deliver many to many uh, using the capabilities now right inside of Media Composer. So, uh, Tom? 
Great. Thanks, Ray. Um, and so I will be showing a, a little demonstration video of how to set it up, but it does make sense to come back to this slide to explain a little bit more about what the Gateway is for those of you that may not be familiar. Um, so the Gateway is a product by from HiVision. It's a server, a virtual machine, a cloud instance. It can be provisioned anywhere, as we said. Um, and it really is an SRT workhorse. So in these situations where you have many SRT streams from multiple sources going to multiple destinations, it's really going to help just make things less complicated, um, but it's also going to do the replication that um, you maybe needed to do previously on the computer that was generating the source. You're going to move that that load over to the gateway and let the gateway handle that replication, and you're going to let it handle it in an ad hoc way. And I'm going to show you how that works in a little bit. Um, and then from the security standpoint, um, just to speak on that, because I'm going to show you a specific type of a configuration. It's very common. Uh, what we would call sort of a listener-listener uh, configuration where on the source side, the gateway is configured to listen for the inbound sources, but then on the destination side, the gateway is configured to listen for downstream callers to pull the streams. Um, and th this is very helpful, very important. It's, it's a great way to sort of decouple the on-premise firewall from your end users. In this scenario, you can basically whitelist an IP address in the sky. In this, you know, in this situation, we have the gateway in the cloud and have the streams from the facility just go to that IP address in a very secure manner. And then all of the end users never touch that facility firewall. Instead, they interact with the SRT gateway, which is doing the distribution. Um, and, and another thing I want to talk about is the Play Pro app. Um, we've, we've mentioned it a little bit. It's one of these uh, endpoints that you can see the third one down, and I'm going to demonstrate it in my video. Ray, if you want to move to the next slide, just to speak a little bit about what that is. Um, of course, SRT is open source, as we've said. There are many different ways to use it to uh, deliver streams, whether that's for consumption or distribution. The Play Pro app is an app developed by High Vision that's available on both the iOS store and Android. It's free. It's a really great tool used across many markets for any sort of SRT viewership because of its ease of use, because of its quality. Um, and this is the tool that will make use of these QR codes. Um, you can see the QR codes here. Uh, you could even flash them right now with your camera and get to the App Store to download uh, this app if, if you want. But it's going to be an integral part, especially for some of those other tiers of viewers that maybe don't need a color correct SDI monitor and maybe are on the go, you know, on a train somewhere um, in a different country, but need to be part of a collaborative session. Okay, so now we can go ahead and get to the, uh, the demonstration here. So this is a web interface of an SRT gateway. Um, and Ray, you can go ahead and start the, uh, the video there, Evan. Th this is where an administrator, whoops. As you can see, it's movie magic, it's not live. Um, th this is where an administrator would do all of the routing configuration for all of their live sources. So this interface that we're gonna show you is not a look for the end user, it's really just for the administrators of this server. And um, yeah, we can just keep it in this view, it should be fine. So when I say routing, we really do talk about this concept of routes. A route is one source to one to many destinations, sort of think of it as an in with multiple outs. In this case, we're gonna to need to configure that in, which is that SRT stream from the media composer. It's sort of replacing the SDI cable, cable that's coming out of the media composer machine. In this case, we're gonna configure it to be listening on a specific port, as I said earlier, for the media composer to push the source into. So I'm configuring this port here, 12,001, and then we're gonna have media composer push into that. And I'm gonna put a low latency here because maybe I have a good connection from the facility to the cloud and I don't need a lot of buffering. For the output, I'm going to create a destination, and this one destination configuration is going to actually serve multiple streams to multiple downstream viewers. And I can have it set up as a listener, listening on a specific port. I do want to limit it, maybe, so I'm going to say only three people can tune it into it at once. Maybe this is because I want to make sure I don't overconsume my available bandwidth. Um, that 13,001 port is the one that the downstream viewers are going to tune into. I'm going to put a higher buffer here in that latency setting because maybe somebody has a bad connection. And of course, I want to encrypt it. This is pre-release material. I want to make sure that nobody that uh, doesn't have that passphrase can, can view the stream. So very simple. I've already created that. I'm going to go ahead and hit start. This is now creating on the gateway server. In the background, I could go to Media Composer, quickly punch in the IP address, of the gateway and that source port to configure the SRT out. And when we expand this route view, you'll see that top row is, is showing the source. It's gonna go green in a second once the media composer connects. 
And that's the beauty of the gateway. You can pre-connect all of your sources before anyone tunes in at all. And that way you can have a quick way to take a look at statistics, ensure the, the health and quality of those first mile transmissions before you even talk about the last mile to the end user. So now I'm opening a program called VLC. It's a, another free program for viewing SRT streams. I've put in the IP address and the port of the gateway. And we can see that it immediately comes up as a destination client, one out of the three allowed connections there. I have individual stats for it, um, but that destination is allowing three. So I can immediately go over and create a QR code to use my mobile device. So this is a web tool on the High Vision uh, website that will allow you to quickly create these uh, QR codes just by simply putting in the IP address or host name, putting in that port. That way your end user doesn't have to deal with any of that. And with this web tool, you can then get this universal link um, or this, uh, this QR code that you can email to people, you know, message to them, they can point their camera at it. If they don't have the app already, they can go to the app store and get it. But the QR code will also take them to the app store if they do not have the app. Um, and I'm gonna show you real quick what it looks like. If I take an iPad and I point it at that QR code, it's going to immediately open up the app there and tune into the stream without the end user really having any visibility into the IP address, the port, the encryption passphrase. Um, and I can start watching it um, simultaneous to the other viewer that was on VLC. If we go back to these stats, we can now see that there are two out of three allowed connections. I can select from a dropdown which connection I want to look at stats for. So if one end user is having a problem and the other isn't, I can sort of hone into that connection take a look at the stats, determine whether or not this is actually a network issue. You know, I can see that there's some packet loss um, on this connection, and that could be a good indication that maybe I need to actually increase my SRT latency for this delivery because somebody has maybe got such a bad connection that we need to do a little more conservative of a uh, transmission than usual. Um, you can look into these graphs, get some historical uh, information about the health of the transmission. If you make changes, that's a quick way to see if they've had a good effect. Then you can go back and rinse and repeat. So I've really shown you one channel, one edit bay, but a gateway can handle multiple different channels. You can aggregate all of these uh, outputs from Media Composer into the same gateway and have it be a single point of access for all of your end users, really, really simplifying all of that configuration. Excellent. Thanks, Tom. Um, all right, so let's uh, see this thing in action. So um, with uh, with that, I'm going to introduce uh, Michael back into the conversation. Michael, you want to hop on and I'll stop sharing and you can uh, take over. All right. Can you see and hear me? Yes, we can. And I will share my screen. All right. So hopefully everybody can see the Media Composer UI. Yes. Perfect. Now, I did want to bring up that uh, you may be seeing a different view. Normally, I'm just running off of you know my laptop, which I am, but I'm actually on a, a wider screen display because I basically want to show people that you can actually still float your bins and windows. Go ahead and just hide my little zoom in the background here. You have your, your project window over here with your settings and your effect palette. So you can actually configure the workspaces the way that you want and actually have the source and record uh, window and my timeline over here in its own separate panel. So um, what we're talking about here, of course, is SRT and how it's activated with Media Composer Enterprise. So uh, you're in your typical project, you've gone in, you've created this amazing sequence right here. And what I want to do is be able to send this out, of course, to anybody to be able to see wherever they, they are. So in the software and hardware button in the uh, right side above the timeline, if you right click, you will have the SRT option. And from here, you would select configure, which brings up a, a new window now. It's the IO manager for the Avid SRT option. And this is where you're gonna set how it's gonna be configured. Now, Thomas was talking about you know, the gateway and setting it up, and we talked about callers and listeners. So you'll see you do have two different modes that you have here. So depending on how you're using SRT is going to dictate how you set up your settings with the IO manager. So if you do go to the Play Pro app that you download for free, there is a Play and SRT stream option. And in there, there's an IP address. So you could actually be talking to somebody and say, hey, I want to send you the output. Give me your information here. And you would plug in the IP address. You plug in the port. You'd hit apply save that out, and then you would enable 
the uh, output here by just selecting it, the button would come live, you see it playing, and then as you play, it would be sent out to whoever is on the other end of the application. So being able to play that out. But where the uh, real power here, and of course there's probably multiple people that wanna see this at the same time, it's using that, that gateway that uh, Thomas talked about. Uh, we do have one that was set up for Avid. Uh, this is actually just the, the preview. You can't scan this. I know there's a lot of people out here. So this is just the sample. So if you try scanning this, of course, you won't get to the application. But we do have everybody who's already on here who can go in and scan the application here. I've gone in to configure my settings under SRT. So we have the caller. So everyone's going to be calling into this. We have the IP address on the gateway and the port settings. So when I hit apply now, what I'll do is activate this. I'm going to go ahead and play my Media Co Composer sequence, this amazing sequence I have here. And I think everybody will be able to come on live and they'll be able to see this playing on whatever the devices that they have access to. So I can't see who's online right now. So go ahead and, uh, you know, everybody who has access here, they're actually playing and seeing that output as I'm playing it out. Woo! <laughs> awesome. Excellent. I know it's an amazing cut. We'll go in and make some changes there. Just uh, let me know what needs to be done. All right. Perfect. Thanks so much. So yeah, the, the power here is you can actually do person to person or point to point. You can do uh, multiple systems and depending on, you know, devices you have connected, you can uh, actually have a really great experience with great quality playing out either on a mobile device or uh, VLC or a, a hardware device as well. So really great power here with SRT. Now there are some, of course, other things with Media Composer 2021.9 that uh, is available here. Uh, SRT is a really amazing part of the application, but I do wanna talk about some of the other new things that you will get with Media Composer with the latest release. And one of them is as you start going in and moving clips up and down in your timeline. Let's say I wanna grab this clip right here. You'll notice when I move the up and down arrow keys, it's actually wiping out the edit that was above there. I'll just undo just to bring that back again. And this was something that, you know, by choice, you could go in and select what you wanna have happen when that clip is being moved up and down in the timeline. But now with 2021.9, if you right click, there's an option here that says, move clip leaves filler. And there's a checkbox next to it, which means that that is active. So it will leave filler as it's being moved. So if I click on that, which deselects it, now when I go in to make that move with that clip, you'll see that the media stays underneath there. So now you have a choice as to what's gonna happen with the clips when you move them up and down. You'll see you have that under the timeline setting as well to move clip leaves filler. So it's all about the settings. It's all about how you want to work with Media Composer. Now, we also have a tool palette. And the tool palette is something that is in the system. Here you'll see under the uh, tools menu, we have tool palette. The tool palette was a button that was in the middle between your source and record monitors. But now you'll see that I have multiple selections here. I have audio, edit, and effects. These are actually set up in your settings. So you'll see if you go to the settings menu, and I go to the tool palette, I've set up multiple tool palettes. And what this brings up is a separate tool palette. Let's bring up the edit tool palette. I have some buttons here that I've mapped. You'll know the tool palette, you can make as big as you want and map any buttons here if you would like. But the real cool thing about the new features with the tool palette is it is dockable. So I can take that, I can dock it into the UI, I can save it. So I now have a whole set of tools here they actually created another set for, you know, just audio tools. So here's some things like, you know, audio keyframes. Um, I actually took some mixer options and I mapped them here. Let's take this and let's put it um, on the bottom of my bin right here. So now you can go in and customize with multiple tool palettes and save those to a workspace as well. Uh, another big thing, and this was a feature request by a major uh, feature film, but as we start moving into more VFX-heavy films and television shows, uh, 
this sequence here. I know it, it's a lot of multiple clips here, but what I want to point out is we can go up to now 99 tracks of video and 99 tracks of audio. So 198 tracks in your timeline. I do want to let you know that if you are using earlier versions of Media Composer that only have 64, you want to be aware that if you go over that amount and you try going back to an, another version or you're trying to bring a sequence into a, an older version, you may need to break it up into multiple layers. But if you are VFX heavy, if you're going more than 64 tracks, you can actually, again, go up to 99 tracks of video. So that is also included in the next version. Uh, we've also done some nice things in your bins. Now, you know that the bins you can display, uh, you have your frame view, you have your text view, you can go and actually have your bin status here where you can see how many clips you have and how many you have selected in duration. But uh, a lot of people, when I see in, in edit bays or projects, they like to go in and group their clips uh, and, and align them. And it's always trying to align them up to actually make them make it look a little clean. So what we will be including in 2021.9 is snap to grid. Currently it is disabled. We have an option to temporarily turn it on. There's an option to enable it and an option to keep it invisible as well. So I'm gonna enable it. And what you'll see is there is a live grid. And now you can actually go in and make nice clean layouts to your bins drag them, you'll see you can actually line them up. If I go in and change the size, the grid actually moves along with it. If I go to invisible, the grid, of course, is invisible, but it is still snapping to that grid. And I like temporary. And what temporary does is if I first go in and start moving my clips around or my assets, you'll see that it's pretty free form. But if I hold for a second, the grid pops up and then I can go in and lock it in, keep it ni nice and clean. So you can go in and set up your, your grid and your layout and move things around as you want with the new snap to grid functionality. All right, now we also have in your bins, if you're in text mode, being able to go in and move the width column. So any text-based um, column, if it has you know data, if it has uh, a a real name, if it has a name, it's not going to be able to be uh, modified with color or the clip icon, but you'll see if I go right in between the columns, I hear you cheering, you can now go in and change the size of the bin column width. What's also nice is because you never know how long every clip name is, if I double click at that separator between the two columns, it actually will change. Oh, I have a lot of copies there. I need to go in and use find and replace now to take all of those out. I was just trying to make some more media. But you'll see that I can go in and actually go and change the size of that. So uh, just a handful of some great features that are added in there uh, with the bins, 99 tracks of video, moving clips up and down. And again, the big thing is SRT being added with Media Composer Enterprise. So... Um, I think at this point, Ray, I'll hand it back to you. And uh... yeah. thanks, Michael. Thank uh, pretty amazing stuff. Um, yes. All right, I'm just gonna go back to this real quick. So uh, I've seen a few questions uh, come in in terms of what do you need and are uh, are things available uh, in the Avid price book. So what you need is Media Composer Enterprise. Uh, Enterprise is indeed the version that has the SRT out capability built into it. It is not in Ultimate or the others. Uh, so I've seen a few questions around that. Um, the gateway is indeed optional, but as I said, I think the, the cases more often than not will be where you're going to send multiple media composers to multiple end users all at the same time. So the gateway would be required if you want to do that. Um, the gateway can uh, live on-prem. It's an actual uh, device, right? Uh, as you see pictured here, um, or it runs as software uh, on an Azure VM. So uh, both of which are available, of course, in the Avid price book. And then, uh, as I was saying earlier in the presentation, you can design the receive side however uh, you need to in order to meet the needs of that particular production. So if you have folks at home who are editors who want to have that uh, you know, 
third monitor, uh, the mirroring the same example that they might have on-prem um, and being able to send the output of Media Composer to that monitor to look at a higher quality output. They can certainly do that and do so using the either Makito decoder or set-top box. Um, there's always the VLC player, which is free to download. Of course, the PlayPro app, which Tom just talked about, um, also free and available in either the Apple or Google Play Store. Um, and I just want to mention again, you know, that uh, because it's SRT and you saw from the earlier slide that Marcus showed, um, you have just a tremendous amount of options, right, in terms of devices that have baked SRT into, uh, uh, into their own uh, components. And so this really provides just a massive amount of flexibility in terms of how you ultimately decide uh, to go about uh, basically delivering the output of Media Composer to pretty much anyone, anywhere, anytime, um, while at the same time being able to mirror any experience if you choose to, uh, that's the same as what you would have on-prem in a traditional editing suite. Um, so hopefully that answers some of those questions. Um, at the same time here, I'm just gonna pull up some of the questions that are being asked. Um, someone asked, you know, uh, how does NDI and SRT uh, compare. So NDI, before NDI 5, NDI was really primarily meant for networking in the building, right? Uh, which was sort of commoditizing all the hardware that was available, which is a fantastic protocol. Now they've got NDI 5. If you haven't heard of NDI 5, definitely look into it. Um, I would say NDI 5 is aspiring to uh, be what SRT is in the sense that it's delivering now, I think, content over commodity internet using a similar uh, sort of, uh, I guess, technology uh, stack potentially. Um, I, I honestly have more to look into on the NDI 5 side of things. Um, SRT is, is delivering that content um, as a protocol, right? Uh, with all the security that we talked about, delivering across commodity internet, making up for jitter and packet loss, basically putting things back together using a host of different techniques in order to deliver content reliably, either point to point like Michael talked about, or you know, one to many or many to many. Um, and that's where the gateway uh, comes in. The gateway, of course, is uh, I think uh, an important thing that uh, was said by Thomas uh, was that a lot of the uh, sort of replication of streams is happening on the gateway. So that's offloading that job onto the gateway itself. So that's making uh, delivery uh, even smoother uh, for folks who are accessing with multiple different people looking at the same output at the same time. Um, in terms of, uh, let's see, what are some of the codecs? I think uh, initially it's H.264, um, but I will definitely get back to you on uh, other uh, codecs if they're supported. If they're not, I'll also let you know. Um, one of the things I'll mention is, you know, all these questions are fantastic, by the way. Uh, there's quite a few of them. Um, the, uh, the, this is being recorded, of course, and we will send out the link to the recording, but we'll also answer all these questions and make those uh, available as well. Uh, let's see, what are some of the good ones here? Um, so someone asked what SRT was. I think we covered that though. It looked like somebody asked what SRT was earlier on in the session. So pretty sure we answered that one, but uh, if not, uh, Neil, hopefully you, you caught the few slides we covered on SRT. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, when will Pro Tools be supported? Good question, don't know. Uh, there is no plan that I'm aware of, at least today to support SRT out of Pro Tools. Um, if there is, we'll certainly let you know. Uh, let's see, in the casting example, will there be an app compatible with the new Chromecast and Google TV? Uh, let's see, I don't know, uh, Marcus or Thomas, do you know, is there, a, I know that um, you can certainly play, uh, download the Play Pro app onto an Android device. Does that include something like the Chromecast or Google TV? Coming back in, uh, no. The, right now, uh, Android device, uh, phone or tablet. Okay, got it. Thank you. And Ray, uh, I think there was, there was a, a question at, towards the end, I think along those lines, somebody asked about it running on an Apple TV. Yeah, so there is an app uh, that runs on uh, an Apple TV. Uh, I will, I'm drawing a blank on the name of it, but there is an app that actually has SRT uh, baked into it that will run on an Apple TV. I will get the name of that app for you, unless Marcus, you remember the name of it. Well, it's not this way. There, there is, um, there is. Uh, I just, on, just on the topic in general, um, you know, we're covering all high vision stuff, really. And uh, when we talk about SRT Alliance, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not able to plug anybody else right now because I don't know off the top of my head. But there is a lot of other SRT stuff out there, um, and there's a good chance that somebody could build a workflow uh, that they need based on other technology that we aren't discussing today. Mm -hmm. uh, 
but definitely from high vision, there's, there's an app, um, for, there, there is a, an SRT capable app, uh, for Apple TV, uh, called high vision play. Uh, there's high, high vision play pro for mobile and, uh, and of course the, the other devices. And I think the important thing to just to point it out, especially with the decoder, um, you know, because you're looking at it on a mobile phone. If you want to look at it on a high quality monitor that's fueled by an S, you know, SDI video, uh, the death, the decoder is the way to go. I, I know it's, yeah. you know, it's more costly it's alternative and it's not portable for, uh, well, it's, it's not that it's not portable. You're not going to use it on the train on the go. Uh, it's very small. Um, but, uh, but there, there are certainly plenty of options in order to build workflows. And I'm sure there are other things out there because the SRT Alliance is big and there's lots of technology that has enabled SRT workflows. That's good to know, yeah. And I think that's such an important point, right? So again, just going back to the Alliance, I would encourage everybody to check out the SRT Alliance page, look at all the vendors that are a part of it. Um, and then you can do the research as to uh, what those particular vendors are offering, whether it be, you know, decoders or, or you know, players, you know, you name it, right? It's just, it gets bigger and bigger every day. And that includes uh, the networking piece, meaning you could send SRT now over uh, IP networks that are managed by different services as well. So again, this provides just a tremendous amount of possibilities in terms of where this content can be sent uh, and how, um, you know, and it just provides you with a tremendous amount of flexibility. Um, someone had asked, uh, you know, I think a question that was more or less about, you know, formats and so on. SRT is, is agnostic, right? It's basically encapsulating whatever it is you're sending. So SRT and Marcus, you can correct me if I'm wrong here, but SRT doesn't really care to a certain extent, right? What the what the what the uh, you know codec is, or or what the bit rate is, or any of that. It's it's really it's encapsulating that, and then it's basically sending it. Um, but yeah, I mean, maybe we, probably we, simplifying we, that. But uh, no, I, I mean, it's, I think we, that's what, that's generally what we how we describe it. It's content agnostic. So uh, we use it ourselves for H.264 and AGVC workflows uh, at High Vision. Um, it's capable of doing file transfers. I mean, you can send all kinds of stuff through SRT depending on what you end ultimately build into the workflow. So there's nothing, at this point, it's an avid, it's an avid question as to which, which uh, codecs you support. Mm -hmm. Yep, excellent. So hopefully that ans answered that question. Let's see, there's some other good ones in here. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, yep. Yeah. Will High Vision Gateway be available in the price book? Yes, it is. It's already there. Um, as is the encoders, decoders, set top box, all of that is in added price book, including the gateway, the gateway, whether it be the physical device or uh, the cloud deployed version, those are also in the added price book already. Will this be replacing NDI? No, it's not replacing NDI, it's in addition to. I think the other thing to mention too here is that you will be able to send SRT out and still have the ability to send out, um, you know, to a third monitor, you know, with the device on-prem, meaning if you have an on-prem device, uh, an on-prem system, obviously you do, you're, you're sending that output through your traditional, uh, uh, you know, methodologies, right, out of media composer, but you're also able to send SRT simultaneously, so that is, part of it, but this is not replacing NDI. NDI, I don't know if you saw when Michael did the demo, but NDI is also still in the dropdown for uh, for the open IO as an option. So that is still there. Uh, when using SRT for any closer, does hardware get disabled like NDI? When using SRT need closer, does the local hardware? I'm not sure what the question is. What about the number of audio channels both with and without NDI? Uh, so I will get back to you on that question, Fausto. Uh, it's a good question. Um, I'm not 100% sure what you mean on the front end uh, from the opposer does the local hardware get disabled. I think uh, the answer to that is no. I think you're still sending out the output. I think that's my point I just made. Um, but I will find out in terms of uh, number of audio and video channels. And I will certainly let you all know. Uh, let's see. A lot of these have been answered. Um, let's see. No, I think that's generally uh, it. I mean, a lot of these are repetitive. Uh, so what I would say is um, two things. One, first and foremost, I want to thank everybody for, for being part of this today. I also want to uh, highlight the fact that um, if you're not familiar, we also have a Making the Media podcast, which is hosted by our own Craig Wilson. If you haven't checked this out, you should. It's an excellent, excellent podcast. 
He's had just a, a, such a great broad array of folks he has uh, been able to interview, talking about everything that's pertinent to every single one of us who are in the industry. Um, and he is, inter he is uh, interviewing Peter Mag all about SRT. So if you want to learn more about SRT and the SRT Alliance, um, the next episode of Making the Media podcast is with Peter Mag, uh, who is the uh, Chief Marketing Officer over at High Vision. And this link right here will take you to the uh, podcast page, uh, and that's where you'll be able to find it. It gets posted on the 20th of September. Um, and while you're there, please check out all the other fantastic podcasts that have been done because uh, they are excellent and uh, is a who's who of folks in the industry that have been interviewed. Um, I think with that, uh, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and end it. And again, thank every single one of you for joining today. This recording will be sent to everyone. Well, any of the questions that we didn't answer, uh, like I said, we will answer and we will share that along with uh, the link once we send the link to everybody that signed up. And uh, we're very excited about this uh, next release and hopefully you are too. And uh, once again, thank you all for being a part of this today. I hope you all have a great rest of your day and thanks again. Bye.